This is happiness to be everything at once. Be unblinded, be unlearned, be unbridled and unburned. Hey everyone and welcome back to a brand new episode of Mood Prep. My name is Dave Nixon and uh, and today uh, I'm going to actually continue the theme. I'm going to pull apart another quote, um, one of my uh, one of my favorite quotes. I remember when I first came across this. I actually have a feeling I may have done a podcast on this already. Uh, if I did, I can't remember and maybe you guys that are new listeners haven't heard it anyway. It would have been a um, uh, hundred episodes ago if I did. Uh, so anyway, um, the, the quote is by Mr. Bill Burr, who's probably my favorite comedian. Um, of all time and he says uh, this is the quote and, and I, I'll explain why it saved my life after I read the quote and then I'm going to explain a few points about it that I, that I wrote written down here um, which, uh, which I want to point out so this is a qu- quote realize that sleeping on a futon when you're 30 is not the worst thing you know what's worse sleeping in a king bed next to a wife you're not really in love with but for some reason you married and you got a couple of kids and you got a job you hate you'd be laying there fantasizing about sleeping on a futon there's no risk when you go after a dream. There's a tremendous amount of risk to playing it safe. Mr. Bill Burr, comedian. So I, I came across this quote. Uh, I was actually sleeping on a friend's couch. Um, I was in between house sits. So I house sat for, for a good solid three years of my life. Um, and uh, moving into house sitting wasn't like, here, I'll save money. I actually went in a massive downturn with the business. And, um, and because of that, uh, I, I, I took a massive pay cut um, and it, with that massive pay cut, it was like, fuck, well, how do I cut my, my, my finances? Um, I had actually already committed to going overseas to America as well. So it's pretty simple. I, all I did was um, cut out my rent. And so I put all my stuff in storage. I sold my bed. I sold my fridge. Um, I sold uh, my, my couch, my TV. I sold all that sort of stuff, put a couple of bags in storage, um, and, uh, yeah, and, and off I went and, uh, it was, it was a pretty messy time. I went from house sit to sleeping in the car to sleeping at the, at work to, to a house sit to sleeping on a friend's couch and so on and so forth. And I actually came across this, um, at a time where I was, uh, was literally sleeping on, on, on one of my mate's couch and, uh, it saved my life in the sense that I didn't sell out. That's how I, that's how I sort of justify and understand this idea of it saving my life, right? Because from there, it, was, it, it sort of helped me just go back, like, don't fucking go get a shitty job just for the sake of feeling comfortable. Like, if you're uncomfortable, just move through it, deal with it, as opposed to going, I'm not going to, I can't sleep on couches anymore, I can't keep house sitting, uh, I need to go earn money, so I'm just going to go take a job that I don't want to pay someone else's mortgage. And so, I, that was a conversation that I had with me, and so I stuck it out, um, you know, I, I had some friends that really helped me through that process as well. Uh, which I'm really grateful for, um, and uh, and I really look forward to making sure that I can continue to pass that on, uh, and I hopefully I have in this podcast, but continue to pay that forward in many different ways. And so, for me, that's how it really, really resonated with me at the time, um, and uh, and saved my life in short. So, let, let, let's pick, pull apart this um, this quote, therefore, shall we? So the first part is uh, where you are now. It's my, it's my point here. So realizing that sleeping on a futon when you're 30 is not the worst thing. Now, what I'm saying about where you are now is like realize that wherever the fuck you personally are in your life right now is not going to be where you finish. doesn't mean that that's where, where you are right now. doesn't mean that that's the end game. That's, this is what it's always going to be like. You can choose how you want to live every single day. And if you're going through a transition, then understand it's trans means to move. That's why transport, you move between ports, right? Transform, you change, you move form and structure. And so when you're in a transition, ition meaning process, like hibernation, right? It's a, it's, it's a process, same with motivation. It's to move towards action. It's the action of moving. And so in this circumstance, what's really crucial is understanding that if you're in a transitional stage in your life, it's one of the most important stages. Like, fucking pay attention. Don't think you're being punished. Don't think that you're a loser. All that shit is bullshit. Just keep moving forward and just keep... But here's the fucking thing. You've got to keep moving. You can't just hope that it's going to get better. You've got to actually do shit to make it better. And you've got to start really paying attention to your thoughts, stay, paying attention to the bullshit that you say about yourself that's not true, that you first heard off someone else. Like, you got to fucking quit that shit, hey? Like, 
there's a time where it's, you know, you got to grow up and, and maybe this is it. So just really, really recognize the transitional standpoint at whatever area in your life you're in. Maybe it's to do with health. Maybe it's to do with career. Maybe it's to do with study. Maybe it's to do with family. Whatever the fucking transitional stage is for you, pay attention to it and just move through it. But move through it. Grow through it. Don't just go through it. So that's my first point, right? The second point there was, which what was a big point for me, is don't sell out, right? You know what's worse? Selling out, whatever that is. He says here, sleeping in a king bed next to a wife you're not really in love with, right? And maybe it's not a wife for you. Maybe it's a husband. Maybe selling out is actually getting out of the relationship where they treat you really, really well because you don't feel like you deserve that. So you keep fucking relationships up because you have a low self-esteem. But here's a really fucking interesting thing around self-esteem, and I'll just mention it briefly and quickly. Often what happens is that people go, I have a low self-esteem, so I look for it in other people. It's like, if you didn't have, if you didn't have self-esteem, if you had no self-esteem, self-value, and you look for it in other people to have it in you, it's like, if you had none, you wouldn't be able to find it. They, you wouldn't be able to get it from other people which means you have some, you've just got conditional esteem, and that's different. And so understanding this for us and ourselves is like, just don't sell out. Your self-worth is fucking invaluable as a human being, and it, it, don't confuse that for self-confidence, which is our, our confidence and our ability to execute something. That is different. So really, in this, 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 this space, pay attention to where you're at, pay attention to... to, to what's selling out on your dream, on your purpose, on, on what's fucking crucial for you, pay attention to what that is. Really pay attention. All right, my next point is doing it for them. So often this whole idea of like, you know, next to a wife um, who you're not really in love with, but for some reason you married and you've got a couple of kids and you've got a job you hate. And often people go, yeah, I do it for them. It's like you're doing it for, the, you're doing it for your kids. So you're showing your kids that you know, you should be doing shit that you hate in order for your kids to grow up and do the same shit that you did. Now, I'm not saying that's the same story for every single person that doesn't like their job. I'm not saying that at all. But our kids watch us, and if we fucking hate what we do, they, they think that's normal. They think that's adult. You'd be surprised at how many adults I work with that don't want to be a fucking adult because they watch their parents be fucking miserable. It's like, A, if you've got, if you've got kids, you don't have to act like that. You can act different. You've got a choice. B, if, you're, if you remember your parents doing that, then you have a choice. That was your parents' choice. This doesn't mean it's yours. You don't have to do the opposite, which actually opposite is often the same thing. You can choose your own fucking life. You can choose what you want to do. You can choose how you want to grow up. And that's true, and that's honest, right? So really pay attention to it. Like, doing it for them, are you? Or are you doing it because that's all you know to do because you're afraid of change? Like, pay attention to that. And then the last part here right? It's two points, but they're going to feed into it, into each other is there's no risk when you go after a dream, right? There is no risk. It's like, what if I don't make it? It's like, then you fucking live life on your terms. It's because you didn't make it. What point, what happens after you make it? What you done? You know, you never make it. There's no fucking finish line. You unravel every single fucking day to what's true to you. And you can keep, continue to unravel that. And in turn, that will inspire other people. And this is where the power is. Not trying to fix other people. Other people, it's not your job on this earth to fix other people's shit. It's their job to seek it. Maybe you're playing an instrumental role in that process. But stop fucking fixing people and pay attention to your own life. Because you're screaming out for help by trying to help everyone else. I promise you, clean your own room. It's an analogy. And the last point there is playing it safe. This is the last thing I'll say on playing it safe. Playing it safe is one of the most riskiest things you can ever do. Playing it safe can often be deadly because all you do is play it safe until you die. Right? That's the whole idea of then going and buying a caravan. Not that I have anything against caravans. It's more so this is what we work so hard for. Yeah, pay attention to it. Hey, make sure you understand you really own the decisions and the responsibility in your life. Team. I'm done. Thank you very much for tuning in. I hope you enjoyed Bill Bird's pod podcast. This is Bill Bird's podcast. This is Bill Bird's quote and my breakdown of that as well. If you have any questions, by all means, jump on Mood Prep online. I'd love to hear them. Otherwise, I'm done. Until tomorrow. Oh, by the way, if you enjoyed this, please share it. That would mean the world to me. I hope someone else would enjoy it if you do share it with them. Um, and yeah, that's it. Me done. Peace and pizza. Kick today in the dick. Slay the dragon. I'll see you soon. Beyond blinded, beyond learned, beyond bridled and unburned.